JC Aragoni, five years ago you were in a coma. Uh, this year, main draw of the US Open. What does this run mean to you? Yeah, it's crazy how things change. Um, no, it's been, I mean, extremely fun, especially from where, you know, I came Saturday night not being in the tournament to then getting in and making the most of, uh, making the most out of it. I, somebody told me yesterday only like six wall cards have ever made it through qualies. Um, so, you know, it's an amazing accomplishment and being able to play against someone like Kevin Anderson who has been doing amazing lately and also was a college player is really kind of special. Pretty amazing story. At 16, you were thinking about going pro and then fell into a coma. Just can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, it was just a kind of dramatic change in, of events in my life. Um, went from, you know, planning on going pro straight, having, you know, very good results in the juniors, um, traveling with the USTA to then kind of having to prioritize my health and um, my well-being and that but that kind of you know transition to then going into college which ended up being you know the best four years of my life and um, you know if I could go back for fifth I would that's so you know from so much of a you know downfall and everything I think there's a lot of positives I took from it I think um, you know being able to get an education and kind of continue to grow te with my tennis game was something that you know helped me out this week and um, you know so at the moment I have no regrets I don't think um, you know, not being able to play pro at 16 is really something that, you know, changed my life. If anything, I think what happened to me ended up, you know, kind of shaping who I am today and, you know, helping me get to where I am right now. You spent a couple years off the court after that. Uh, how did you transition into college? It, it was definitely hard, especially, um, you know, my parents were extremely protective at the time after what happened, as you can imagine. So going from California all the way to Virginia, I'd never really been to the East Coast besides Florida, completely different change of scenery, different change of people. Um, but, you know, it really helped me because in college you do have that support group. You have your teammates, you have your trainers, you have you have so many people to rely on. So it almost, you know, it, it hurt being away from my parents, especially in the time that I was. But um, going to college really helped me, you know, find a different kind of support group that, you know, helped me push the, the, the kind of the tough situations in my life. You still have to manage your blood sugar on and off the court. How do you manage that on a daily basis? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. Again, you know, in the time we live today, technology is unbelievable. I mean, I have a Dexcom which monitors my sugar 24 hours a day. and. Um, you know, I have an insulin pump which gives myself, you know, which controls my level. So yes, it is tough and there's a lot of unknown, but um, with the technology that we have today, it really makes it that much easier to manage it. Um, and again, at the end of the day, that is what it is, is you got to find a way to manage it. You know, I've been set a kind of a dealt a set of cards and I got to find a way to, you know, play with them. So, um, you know, I don't think it's, it's that tough, but again, it's just another, another kind of thing you got to find a way to get over. It's another hump in the road. You had to deal with those blood sugar levels a little bit in the first round match as well? Yeah, I had to get escorted uh, out, out to give myself uh, an insulin shot. For some reason, they won't let me here give insulin on the court, so, which is fine, is understandable. Um, but I had to do that one, so it wasn't too bad. And then just on the changeovers, I was constantly controlling my sugar. So um, we got through it, thankfully, with no, uh, no issues. So, you know, that's always the goal. Last year, you interned at J.P. Morgan Chase here in New York City. What was that experience like for you? Um, it's completely different. I mean, you can imagine being a tennis player. You don't really, you're your own boss. You don't have anyone, you know, yelling at you, giving you instructions. Um, to then going to, you know, working at a cubicle, 15, 16 hours a day, you know, kind of is a completely different change of scenery. I, you know, perspective-wise, I got two completely different ends of the spectrum. You know, tennis, you wake up sometimes 9, 10 a.m. You get your, you know, two-hour hits, and you do two hours in the afternoon and. It's, you know, it almost seems kind of laid back compared to the working world, especially here in New York, as you can imagine. But, um, you know, I loved it. I met a lot of cool people. A lot of the JP Morgan guys actually came out and watched my match, which was awesome. Um, so I constantly stay in touch with them. And, you know, for me, it was kind of like a cool experience in my life because at least I don't have any regrets. You know, like people ask me, like, oh, do you wish you would have worked? It's like, you know, like I got to experience that part. Um, and I know eventually I'm going to go back to work. And, you know, you can only play tennis to your 40 or 35. So. You know, for me, it was a good, definitely a good experience, and I, again, I don't, I wouldn't change it for anything. How much tennis were you playing this time last year? Uh, very limited. I probably took the full three months, besides hitting with like coworkers on the weekend or stuff like that. Um, definitely gained a little bit of weight, but um, you know, it was, uh, it was a tough transition back into college. It took me a couple months, but you know, I've been playing tennis so long, it's 
it's not the end of the world. I picked it up pretty quick. How surreal is it a year later now to be sharing a locker room with these guys? Yeah, I mean, you can see Federer and Nadal and all those guys are pretty close by. Um, they put me with the, you know, the American guys, so it's been great kind of getting to, to meet the top Americans. I hadn't before just because I've, you know, I was college tennis and stuff, so everybody's been extremely nice. Um, you know, it's almost, I'm still kind of starstruck. The other day, Federer was standing watching TV and I just like stood behind him just like, just to see what's going through <laughs> through his mind or something. But it was uh, it was definitely like cool experience. Um, that was my first time in the pro locker room just because in juniors, you know, they got a different locker room. So it was awesome. 10 weeks into your pro career, uh, where do you go from here? Um, I don't know, probably go back, play some futures. I mean, completely, you know, going from this to that is gonna be a, a definitely a different change. But, um, you know, gotta keep it perspective in check. and. Um, I still got to work on my ranking, so I'm going to go back and do, you know, the, the same schedule I planned on. I don't really plan on changing much just because, you know, one week isn't going to, you know, change my life. So I need to go back and, you know, keep my head down, keep working. Good luck. Thank you.